Hi, my name is Paul and today I'm going to be talking about what to look for when buying your first pop-up trailer. Today we have a 2015 StarCraft StarFlyer and we're going to use it as an example of what to look for. Now this all started because we were selling this trailer and three couples have came by to look at it but you could tell they really didn't know what to look for. They were kicking the tires, they were feeling around the top, but they really had no idea what they were looking for in a trailer. And I think this is the problem for a lot of people. They start with a tent, they move to a pop-up trailer, and before long they're moving on to a bigger trailer. So really when you're looking to buy a trailer, what you're looking for is something that suits your needs. And everybody's going to have something different. Let's start with this one. One of the most expensive things to replace on a pop-up trailer is the canvas. So you want to look, first of all, at the canvas overall. You want to make sure there's no rips, no holes, and no way that rain or bugs can get in. Now there's two parts to the canvas. There's the screen window and there's the canvas. And also you want to look at the top. Probably most important would be the top because that's where the rain is going to come in. If you have a small rip down here, it's not going to be as bad as if you have a hole on the top of the canvas because as soon as it rains, you're going to get soaked in there. No matter how well you try to patch, the hole in the top is harder to replace. Rain doesn't come from the side, so a small rip here may not be a problem to you. If there's a rip in the screen, you can always just keep this window in particular closed. So overall, I would say number one item is the canvas. The canvas can cost over $1,000 to replace. Secondly, probably, would be the tires and the bearings. Now the wheel bearings inside do go on these very often and they should be greased once a year at least. If you look at a tire like this one and you start to see black around this area, it may mean the bearings are starting to go. The tires, similar to a car, want to have good tread on them. Tires to replace could be $100 to $150. Bearings are not as expensive, but they are very important to maintain. They could leave you stuck on the side of the road. Okay, so I'm going to break down the inside of a trailer to three separate parts. Number one, sleeping. Number two, cooking. And number three, storage. Now, everybody has their own individual needs for sleeping, cooking, and storage. Let's talk about sleeping. On any pop-out trailer, there's going to be beds at each end and perhaps some other additional sleeping areas, either with a sofa here or a fold-down table. On this trailer in particular, there's a queen-sized at one end and a full at the other end. There's also a fold-down dinette. Secondly, cooking. When you think about cooking in a trailer, you may want to think about, do I want to cook inside or do I want to cook outside? This trailer, the StarCraft, has only one stove and it's a built-in stove. Many trailers will have a removable stove that you can mount on the outside of the trailer. You can do all your cooking on the outside. It will save a lot of smell and smoke inside the trailer. So trailers with outdoor barbecues are a bonus. Most trailers have a sink to wash dishes in, they're usually very small. They're simple operated, usually by pump, and many have water tanks. In this StarCraft, we have a small portable water tank, which can be removed, filled up, and replaced. This is great, however, it limits the amount of water you can have. On other units, you'll find them underneath. It's one thing you wanna to check to see if there's a mounted, built-in water tank below, a portable one like this, or no water tank at all. The fridge. Most pop-up trailers have three-way refrigerators. They operate on gas, battery, or electricity. You want to check that the fridge operates on all three. Gas, battery, and electricity. On the outside of the trailer, you're going to find a grill that looks like this. When you open it, you're going to look inside. What you're going to see is something similar to this. There, there should be a switch that may not be as well labeled as this one, and an igniter. There may be also some fuses. What you want to see is if the fridge and the electricity works while operating on DC, AC, or gas. DC would stand for running off the car battery that you'll find on most common trailers. AC would be plugged in. Most trailers are able to be plugged in. Finally, if there's propane, you can run the furnace, the fridge, off of the gas. Once you've considered 
cooking and sleeping. The third area is storage. Now remember that you're going to want to carry everything with you for one to two weeks depending on how long you're camping. Often the area like this is found under the dining area. One last thing to note is the electricity inside the trailer. If you don't have everything you need, you may want to bring a coffee maker, a microwave, small appliances, and you'll need to plug those in. Nowadays, you'll also want to be able to charge your cell phone. So one at each end by the sleeping area, one electrical outlet at each end by the sleeping area is great to have. Other items to consider are added bonuses. Some trailers have an outdoor shower, some have an awning, and some have an outdoor eating area or an enclosed room. This allows you to sit outside, have your dinner, and relax. Saying my, 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 how you